Hello everyone. Welcome on the Straight Line Talks with Pallavi Sari. Today I have with me here a prominent Congress leader from Ladakh, Navang Rigzin Zora. First of all, congrats Mr. Zora. Your party had a great time in those previous elections in three states. So what do you say about that? Good. Uh, the prospects for our party is looking up. Mm -hmm. uh, you have seen it in Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. Uh, so this is... Uh, uh, a good sign for us for the Lok Sabha election. Uh, in Ladakh, Congress had a great sweep in municipal elections and panchayat elections as well. Mm. Do you think that Congress is looking for, towards revival in Jammu and Kashmir? Yes. Uh, with decimation of PDP in Valley, mm -hmm. Congress is a very good prospect in Valley. Uh, with the kind of disillusionment that has set in against the BJP PDP government here, even in Jammu, it's looking up. Ladakh. Well, you know, both the MLAs, uh, they're from Congress party. And now in the recent municipal election in the uh, Panchayat election, we have swept. So prospects are looking very good for us. Uh, now, now let's go towards Ladakh. Ladakh becoming a division. Do yeah. you think that it is a step towards victory, a forward step, a good step? Or do you think it's a step towards bifurcating the state further? And why don't you want to re remain with Kashmir division? If Ladakh is given a genuine administrative division, mm -hmm. then it's a welcome measure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 welcome, it's to be welcomed. But if it's only a posting of an IG and a posting of DCOM mm -hmm. without the paraphernalia, without creation of directors posts in various uh, departments, then it's, uh, you know, fooling the people. If it's only your administrative division is confined to posting over DUCOM and IG, then it's nothing more than fooling the people. Mm -hmm. If it is accompanied by creation of posts of directors mm -hmm. in various, you know, uh, uh, departments, then it's a welcome measure. But people from Jammu and Kashmir don't really wish to be posted in Ladakh because of the cold and all that. So do you think it will yes. be, it will be no, opportunist? No, for the it's not a question of people from Jammu and Kashmir being posted there or not being posted there. We must look at our own, you know, Ladakh has to look at his own interest. Mm -hmm. For us, it's so difficult to, you know, uh, go to Kashmir for everything. Mm -hmm. And given the closure of the road in the winter months, mm -hmm. it makes it all the more difficult. Therefore, looking at, uh, looking at the interests of the people of Ladakh, uh, you know, if, if the uh, governor ends up giving us divisional status, we would welcome it. But again, the mm -hmm. KV address... It has to be a meaningful administrative division accompanied by a creation of posts of directors of various departments. It must not be confined to creation of a post of only your divisional commissioner and IG. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. What is IG there for? IG is there to look after the law and order. As it is, the crime rate in Ladakh is very little, not much. Uh, your IG's job, what is IG's job? IG's job is to uh, decom. Decom is mainly for revenue. Mm -hmm. Revenue rests with the Council of Lay and Karakil. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it is only creation of post of uh, decom and IG, then it's making a fool of people on Ladakh. If it is accompanied with creation of posts of director in horticulture, agriculture, tourism, whatever, other sectors, then it becomes meaningful. Mm -hmm. then, we would, then we would welcome it. Then we would think that the government is sincere. Otherwise, otherwise, just posting of DUCOM and RG won't, won't, won't make any substantive difference. Then a creating of these many posts, why didn't you try for making Ladakh a division during your tenure? And then you could have tried for the opening up so many posts of directors in Ladakh. Okay. During my tenure, what we did was we empowered, empowered the Hill Council. Mm -hmm. The Hill Council needed some empowerment and we did it fully. For example, revenue was not with Hill Council. We gave them revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hill Council's financial power, powers were very little. We empowered them fully. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in many other, for example, the um, uh, chairman of the council and the EC, they did not have any uh, protocol at all. Mm -hmm. We gave them. So whatever could be done, we did during our tenure. Okay. And, uh, and, and do, division, divisional status was never an issue during our time. It only cropped up now because BJP in the last election promised Ladakh UT. 
because they have not been able to give you tea, we know it how easy or how difficult it is. Now, by way of distraction, they came up with this division thing. So, but if, if it is given, if it is given, we are not against it. We we will we will welcome it, provided, as I said, there is a caveat. You have been previously very vocal about uh, making Ladakh Union territory, but that does not seem like on the priority list anymore. Is it that BJP did just made a false <laughs> promise of providing a UT and now you have given up hopes? UT was never ever a commitment given by any Congress government. I am mm-hmm. making a difference. Congress government and congressmen. Mm-hmm. Although it's been a demand of all Ladakhis, irrespective of whether he's from BJP, he's from Congress, or he's from whichever party. Collectively, all of, all of us would like to see Ladakh getting UT. If you're all in favor so of it, me. then no, why no. congressmen haven't talked about it? Hear me out, hear me out. This is a collective demand of all the Ladakhis. Mm-hmm. Just as autonomy is a collective demand of all the Kashmiris. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody could call it by a different name. For okay. example, PDP would call it self-rule. Mm-hmm. NC would call it autonomy, others would call it autonomy. So it's a collective demand. Similarly, <coughs> UT is a collective demand of all the Ladakhis. Mm-hmm. Whether they are Buddhists, Muslims, especially from Leh district. I'm not talking about Kargil. Mm-hmm. Leh district, it's, it's a common uh, demand of all the people, whether they are Congressy or whoever. But Congress, UPA government never, ever give a commitment for grant of UT. Mm-hmm. Whereas Modi government, no sooner it came into uh, power, they <coughs> made a commitment that we will grant you UT, we would also make you an MP minister. Mm-hmm. This was commitment given by the <coughs> NDA government. Now that they have not been able to fulfill this commitment by way of distraction, they came up with this division thing. Is it anything bad for Ladakh? No, it is not. It is just but a consolation prize. Is it a good substitute for UT? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. So by way of distraction, to you know, distract people's attention from UT, to prevent people from pressing for UT, they have come up with this division thing. If this division thing is again a sincere, honest effort, we would welcome it. How do you prove whether it's sincere, honest effort or not? As I said, if it is accompanied with creation of the post of directorate, mm-hmm. 40 directors, then it's meaningful, it's, it would be effective, we would all welcome it. If it is only granting of a du- posting of a DUCOM, an officer, and an IG, then it's taking the people of Radakh for a right. Then it's fooling us. Ladakh has its own special identity, <coughs> but now with the, the claims about having a rail line and a Zojila tunnel, mm. uh, it's an attempt to integrate it with the rest of the regions of Jammu and Kashmir. Do you think, how do you see these? But these are, these are, these are, you know, these are things that needs to come into Ladakh. Why wouldn't we see, like to see Ladakh being connected by rail? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't we like to see Ladakh being connected, you know, 365 days by road? We would like to see this happening. Yes. Are these sincere attempts, or like you said, ki the UT was a hoax, the division no. is just, ma- it looks like Rail- a consolation prize. The R- railway thing would take time. It won't happen in a jiffy. It would take probably another 25, 30 years before we are able to get in rail. Mm-hmm. But yes, the final, you know, locational survey has been carried out. Now we hope that in due course of time, some work starts. It w- it's easier said than done. For Kashmir, it has taken so many years. Ladakh is rather more difficult. Mm-hmm. So we are being realistic. We are being, you know, pragmatic. We, 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 we let the work begin. And then maybe in another 20 years, 30 years, probably we'll have rail. As far as the Zojila tunnel is concerned, mm-hmm. you know, it's been kind of jinxed. Twice, it had to be re-advertised. Third time when this was given, Ireland FS, it has gone kaput. It has gone bankrupt. We all know it. Mm-hmm. As a result of which, your Zojila thing has come to a standstill. But, <coughs> but given the importance of connectivity to Ladakh region, 365 days a year, I am sure something will, be, something, something will work out. Uh, Government of India will try and you know, see how it can be financed. And work will resume on this. Mm-hmm. 
Let's talk about the use of Ladakh. Hmm. Uh, they usually have to go out of Ladakh for further studies hmm. since there are not many universities in Ladakh hmm. and they face such cultural shock and are excluded by the rest of the people in Jammu, in Kashmir, hmm. or they go out to Chandigarh or Delhi. Hmm. So uh, are there attempts being made for creating a kind of an educational institution in Ladakh, which hmm. is par excellence? As far as the government sector is concerned, uh, during my tenure as a minister, we, we took one campus of Kashmir University into Ladakh. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the location was not very convenient, mm -hmm. number one. Other thing was, the kind of stream that, that we introduced, they were not very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, we introduced geography, we introduced information te technology, we introduced tourism, we introduced English. But somehow, there were not many takers. As a result of which, you know, students still continue to go to Jammu, Delhi, Chandigarh and elsewhere for pursuing their higher studies. Maybe we, would, we need to have a relook at the kind of stream that, uh, that must be introduced there in the university campus. I think we should go in for the more traditional stream like history, you know, political science, education, which gets job for people in places like Ladakh. You know, IT, there is no scope in Ladakh. Mm -hmm. Environmental science, although it's, a, it's one of those upstream, uh, one of those sunshine streams, but they don't have prospects of job in a place like Ladakh. So we have to be practical, more pragmatic. We should be going in for traditional streams like education, uh, history, political science, where, you know, uh, boys and girls can get engaged as either teachers or lecturers mm -hmm. or uh, professors. So Jammu and Kashmir is quite a sensitive state, right? Because it is a border state. Mm. And yet Kashmir is being talked about a lot for being mm. on borders with Pakistan. Mm. Jammu is talked about a lot. And Ladakh also shares borders with China, but it is mainly ignored by the people. Don't you think that the people in Ladakh also feel kind of excluded? Like they have been overlooked all the time. Not that, you know, the media hammers Kashmir because, you know, Kashmir is always uh, going through one problem or the other. Uh, Jammu during the during when you have this uh, what you call it uh, cross border firing then Jammu is talked about we don't want to be talked about all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> you know publicity for bad reasons is not a good thing we don't want to be talked about all the time mm -hmm. the only thing is we would like the government of India seeing more paying more attention to Ladakh and uh, Ladakh's representation in state administration is quite low. Mm. So how do you see that? Now, you have the Kashmir Administrative Service, mm -hmm. uh, civil service. Every year, three or four boys and girls, they make it. So we are happy now. Slowly, slowly, more boys and girls are getting into mm -hmm. civil service. And uh, in due course of time, they'll be posted in the secretariat. So things are happening. Things are happening. Mm. But still, uh, let's talk about chief ministership. Mm. Whenever the chief minister has to be made in Jammu and Kashmir, mm. probably it's thought that it should be from Jammu or mm. mainly from Kashmir. Mm. Why is Ladakh overlooked there as well? We don't have the numbers. You don't have the numbers. <laughs> we are only four MLAs and uh, not all the four MLAs are from uh, Congress party. Mm -hmm. or, or It could be from one party. It could be from different parties. Mm -hmm. So it all depends, you see. <coughs> Jammu and Kashmir had the tradition of having the chief minister from Kashmir, uh, had the tradition of having a Muslim as a chief minister because it's a Muslim majority in state. But will it not change? Can it not change in the future? It can. Mm -hmm. For example, if you can recollect, Maharashtra had a Muslim uh, chief minister. Mm -hmm. So ages back. 30 years back. But, so so it's, it's, it's the kind of compulsion that, you know, politics throws up. It all depends on that. But somehow in Jammu and Kashmir, it's always been, you know, the chief minister uh, has always been from a, a majority community and uh, mainly from Kashmir. Thank you. On that optimist note, we'd like to end this. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Zora. This was Mr. Navang Rigzan Zora on the Straight Line Talks. This is Pallavi Sirin signing off.